Mr. Speaker, let's just get something out of the way immediately. Proposing more of the same is not advocating for change. It's just advocating for more of the same. <laughs> Side proposition already concedes that the minister has made several propositions around sugar tax and fizzy drink tax and more taxes on, on alcohol. That's not within the ambit of this debate because that's already status quo. That's already something we're doing. You can't propose something we're doing because we're already doing it. <laughs> I hope that helps you out. Right, now, let's go to the real debate. Several problems were identified in this debate and a lot of those identifications, a lot of the things that side proposition cares about are just beyond the ambit of this debate and are mischaracterized under austerity. Let's look at them quickly. So in the first instance, they tell us that we've got a problem with mismanagement of funds, mishandling of funds, with corruption, with parastatal bail bailouts, which deals with the problem of deployment where you have people without degrees running parastatals. What we tell you is that austerity or no austerity, none of these things change. But if you do have what they want, which is spending cuts and reduced salaries, what you're actually gonna have is more corruption, mismanagement, mishandling, and I'll tell you why. In the first instance, now, say the minister no longer gets a salary from government that was as cushy as he was getting it before. So say minister is going to be more interested in getting more tenders, because, right, they gotta eat, they gotta maintain their lifestyle. And if they were corrupt before, they're going to be more corrupt under the, the policy that is being proposed, not less corrupt, because we already know that they're corrupt. So they don't deal with the problem of corruption of this side of the house. Further, what we see is that there's more incentive to steal when you've cut down my money supply, when you've cut down my ministerial benefits, I'm more interested in getting other streams of revenue. And if 50 billion goes missing a year, we speculate that more will go missing because you cut my financial benefits from the state. So it's not true that implementing austerity measures will solve the problem that they care about in regards to the mismanagement, mishandling, corruption, and parastatal bailouts. Now, the other problem that they tell us is that we've got decreased manufacturing and we've got decreased mining. The example that they use is Anglo Gold. Anglo Gold is not manufacturing as much as before and what we need is for them to manufacture more. What we tell you in our extension is that Anglo Gold sells product. That product is minerals. It's bought by the middle class and the wealthy class. If they are more taxed, they have less money to buy diamond necklaces and Point gold rings. So there's going to be reduced demand for the product that Anglo Gold is selling. If there is reduced demand for the product that Anglo Gold is selling, there is going to be less business for Anglo Gold. So if you want to create more business for Anglo Gold, you don't do it by implementing austerity measures because austerity measures take away their customers. So you don't get what they want under the model. And the same applies to the manufacturing sector. If you want to manufacture stuff, you're not manufacturing for the sake of manufacturing, you're manufacturing for the sake of selling to consumers. What they do under austerity by taxing the rich is they reduce the, the, the consumer base and therefore they reduce the demand for the product and they kill medium and small businesses under their model. So they don't solve the problem that they want to solve. And then they also tell us that we've got a problem with drought, you know, the poor will no longer be able to afford bread, it's expensive. Maize has gone up by 128%. We agree, what you do when the poor can't afford bread is you don't take money out of the system, you give the poor more access to money so that they don't go hungry, right? Lastly, we asked them a POI, it was really a trick POI, because they were talking a lot about protests, and they didn't realize that their model leads to more protests, not less protests. If protests are the problem, if you've got civil protests, you've got fees must fall protests, you've got roads must fall protests, you've got service delivery, you've got COSATU protests. South Africa has something called protest season, where we lose productivity days because people don't get paid enough. Imagine what happens when you cut departments like what was proposed by government, when you cut the civil service, which is what austerity is really about. You've got more people who are unemployed, and then there's going to be more protesting. There's going to be more loss of productivity for the state, and less revenue generated by the state. This is not good, it's bad. <laughs> now, there are three pockets that matter in this debate. There's the deep pocket, you know, the wealthy. What they tell us is, let's tax the wealthy, let's get this money, and let's give it to the poor, and everything is gonna be all good. What we tell you is that you lose the deep pocket, because deep pockets don't just have South African citizenship. A lot of times they've got international citizenship, they can just leave, and deep pockets go where it's cheapest to live. And right now, if you increase the tax, 
they are going to go, right? It doesn't have to be all of them. If some of them go, we're worse off. Quick. You need to understand, already in kind of status quo, people are already suffering. So what then do you suggest to do with the urgency of the problem? Straight. We care about suffering, right? That's why we propose stimulus. What you do when you're going through a recession is you don't cut spending in civil service. You increase it, right? We don't have to guess. You know, a lot of times people act like debating is a guessing game. Debating is not a guessing game. It's a thinking game based on empirical data. When the Great Recession started in 2008, two models were adopted. China and America went for stimulus and the EU went for austerity. We can look now, eight years later, and see that America is still a leading economy, China is still vibrant, going at 7%, America is going at 4%, the European zone as a region is going at 1%. Austerity doesn't work empirically. We're not guessing in debating, we're looking at the data and analyzing from the data. So that's your solution. How do we care for the suffering? No thanks. How do we care for the suffering? We give them more avenues to get revenue. Now, I've shown you what happens to the deep pockets. What happens to the shallow pockets, the middle class, right? What happens to the middle class under austerity measures is that they no longer have as much money to buy the kind of stuff that you do. So there's two things that happen. One, saving is affected because people can no longer save because they don't have a lot of income. Because guess what? Most of South African uh, middle class people are working for the civil sector. If you cut departments like what they propose, you've got less people in the middle class. There's less saving happening, right? But there's also less spending happening on discretionary items. So people aren't buying new fridges because they'll use the older that they have because guess what? It's austerity. Mm -hmm. Guess what's happening to the fridge manufacturers like LG or whoever else makes fridge? They're not getting business. So the, 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 the shallow pockets don't get any help under the status quo. And lastly, what happens to the people with no pockets? <laughs> what happens to the people with no pockets under our extension which we uniquely deal with is that the people with no pro pockets are going to be more frustrated under the austerity measures. Because now they can't even get part-time jobs. Now they've lost their civil sector jobs. The mining uh, c uh, companies are shutting down and retrenching. And also the manufacturing companies are shutting down and retrenching. What that means is that they've got a lot of time to protest against an ANC government that promised them that's exactly what wouldn't happen. So it doesn't get better under the austerity model proposed by side proposition. The only reasonable solution to challenges economically is stimulus and that's what we uniquely propose as side closing.